Alright, hello. It is Saturday, July 24th. It's after my little sister's birthday, so I gotta run up to shoot for a text or something. Um, but it, it's actually also time for my weekly wrap-up. I read like seven books this past week, so we're just gonna get into it because it's pretty, it's gonna be a pretty big one. Um, I enjoyed most of them too, um, with, although a lot of them, especially near the end of the week, are a lot of like ones that I knew I was going to enjoy and ones that were very quick to read, but they're still books. They were still on the book wall. I still count them. First up, I read Terrified by Kevin O'Brien. This is a thriller about this woman who left her abusive husband and then she realizes that a dead girl who has a lot of similarities to her has washed up on shore and without a head or fingertips so they can't really prove it and so she's like oh this is fantastic now they think I'm dead um and that whole thing she's got a son by him too and it was interesting these the thing about Kevin O'Brien's thrillers is that they're very quick to read they're very easy to read I enjoy them they're not like super great but I think I've read one other one by him this is my second one um, and I do really enjoy them and they are very quick to read they're just very melodramatic and he loves violence against women and teenage boys so that's kind of weird um, but I did enjoy it to an extent I think I gave it three out of five stars if you're looking for a quick thriller despite how thick it is like this is a thick book but it was I think I read it in like a day and a half would I would probably recommend O'Brien for that Same situation. Uh, then I read a reread. It was a Stephen King reread. One of my favorite Stephen King books. Um, I I know it's got its problems but I just I love it a lot. Um, Thinner is the one where the lawyer runs down an old woman and her father puts a curse on him. Um, the reason why it is a little bit outdated in ways is because it is focused on Romani curses and stuff like that very stereotypical kind of stuff, but it's still a really fun book. It's a Bachman book um, It is Very campy and fun and I think the movie is really campy and fun too. Um, but it's just it's, it's like his campiest book I really enjoy it. I really like how everything comes to a head. I love the mob boss Ginelli. He's so much fun um, I love the characters. I love the violence. I love the gore. I just I love the story I think it's a really fun one. And like I said, it didn't age well at points, but it's still a really fun book and I still really love it. It's still one of my favorite Stephen King books, so I ended up giving it five out of five. The first of three manga for the week that is Corpse Party Book of Shadows. It was art by Mika Orie and original story by Makoto Keijuan and Team Grigri. Um, but this is like, it takes place after, sort of, but also before. It's like a bunch of different like side stories and backstories and alternate endings and alternate situations and I know the Corpse Party game series there because there are quite a few games and they all kind of take a slightly different look at it um I enjoyed this quite a bit like it's like I've I've read the first three in the manga series I've read one through three of the blood covered series and I've watched the anime adaptation the tortured souls so I'm vaguely familiar with the story already so I knew the characters going into this one one thing that this one does do is it does deepen the relationships between the characters so like all the kind of ship teases in the original stuff is like out and out like oh yeah Osego's a fucking lesbian um she wants to marry Naomi anyway uh I guess I never explained what the story is about um it's about these this group of friends who one of them is leaving uh, the school and so they decide to do this little fun little charm so to keep them friends forever but instead of keeping them friends forever it takes them to a haunted school that murders them gruesomely one by one it's a party of corpses although it's called corpse party um and so it's, it's really fun it's originally a, a game series um in japan and i believe some of the games came out for ps vita i don't have a vita anymore i used to um i still have my dang and rompa games i had one and two on vita um so I might get a Vita, another Vita at some point. If I do, I will definitely pick up some Corpse Party games. Um, the, let's see if I can find some art that does not have massive amounts of gore. Okay, because this is a very gory series. Like, it's, it is dark, it is a dark series. I really, really enjoy it, but that does not change the fact that it is an extremely gory series. I love it a lot, I get a five out of five. Speaking of Japanese, video games turned manga that also had anime. I did read Danganronpa 2 Ultimate Luck and Hope and Despair Volume 1. This is the Komaeda manga for Game 2. 
That's this fuck right here. Um, so Danganronpa is a series. It was a vi originally a video game series. It's about these. The first game um, <coughs> is it. Uh, it's like you're you're th this this kid Makoto, and he is going to this fancy school. And you don't. Ha it's normally for kids with a lot of talent, but he doesn't have a talent. He's just lucky. He got the, his guy's name drawn out of a hat, basically. But then when he gets there, they get locked in, and this bear starts making them kill each other and they have to do class trials and stuff like that. I love, they're, they're visual novels so there's not like a lot of things you can do to change the outcome. Um, but I love the Danganronpa games. Um, this one is based on the second game in which a whole new cast of characters, um, they go and they're about to do the same thing. Um, this is actually the main character in that game. Um, and they end up getting kidnapped by this little rabbit over here and they end up going to an island and then the bear shows up again and kill each other again. Um, so like I said, this is that but it, this is from this fuck's perspective and he is the ultimate lucky student in this one. He's the one who got his name drawn out of a hat. Although his luck is more of a, like an actual talent than Makoto's is. Like his like he actually has talent with that which is weird. Um, the main character you don't know the talent. It's just like a mystery you have amnesia. Um, but I've discovered that I think the second game is actually my favorite. I have a deep love for a character in the first game, but the second game I think is my favorite. I like overall I like the characters more and I just love it a lot more. Um, and I just even though it was from this fuck's perspective, I had fun with it. Um, so this is the art style. Um, is uh, gave it I believe five out of five stars. It's a good time. Then I read one of my own books because they're in the book walls so they'll get read. 40 Days. Uh, this is the second book of the Mythology of Hell series. I wrote this. There's me. Uh, this is a... Uh, the first book follows these three kids who accidentally end up in hell. And then this is the sequel that takes place three years later. Um, it's a fun series. I really enjoyed writing it and I really enjoyed rereading it. This one introduces my favorite character in the world, Alan. I love him a lot. Um, but I don't want to spend that much time on this because I wrote it. it. I gave it four stars, I think. Um, anyway, then I read some Goosebumps. I read Night of the Living Dummy. Uh, now, I was never a huge fan of the Night of the Living Dummy books. I was more of a Monster Blood kind of person. And even in terms of Night of the Living Dummy, I preferred three. Three was my favorite. Um, but it's still, this this first one at least especially is pretty fucking dark. Um, you got, kind of forget sometimes how dark some of the earlier Goosebumps books were. Um, like, they're violent, man, um, but I guess, I, I guess I knew that, um, but yeah, no, it was fun. I had fun with it. I could not help but think of the blogger Beware posts while I was reading it, you know, the guy who did, like, funny recaps of all the Goosebumps books, but I gave it four out of five stars. It was fun. And then we got more Danganronpa. This is the, uh, adaptation of the second game but from the right main character, uh, Goodbye Despair, Volume 2. Um, so this follows the second murder. I do love the art style in this one a lot more. Um, where's my absolute favorite? Absolute favorite. Um, there it is. Ibuki is so fucking bisexual. It's fantastic. Um, again, I explained it, but this is from the right main character. I love the art style. I think the, the Danganronpa 2, Goodbye Despair, volumes are my favorite of the Danganronpa manga series series because they, they've got an adaptation for the first game two adaptations for the second game and an adaptation for Ultra Despair Girls which I did just buy the first one of the other day I've never played Ultra Despair Girls I have no idea what's going on in Ultra Despair Girls but I'll read the manga the, the straight adaptation for Danganronpa 2 is probably the best it's got the best art style it's written the best I love the way that they handle the trials and everything it's just it's just so, so, so much, so much fun. I love these characters. I love my, oh, don't want to spoil anything. Love my boy Soda there. He just found a dead body. So, yeah, currently I am reading Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. This was a book of the month book uh, for June. This is my June book of the month. This is a um, retelling of The Lady of Shalott. 
I believe. Um, it's an Arthurian retelling. I'm enjoying it so far. I'm only like 60 pages in, but it's a good time. I've been pretty slow on reading it because I read like seven books this week, so I felt like I didn't need to like hurry up on it or anything. Um, but these are the books I read this past week. That is all I have today. I will talk to you later and goodbye.